A crane reaching for the skyline is the very definition of modern construction, but it also represents an immense risk. The roughly 100 to 200 crane-related fatalities in the United States over the past decade, based on OSHA and BLS data, weren't tragic flukes, they are patterns. We've analyzed the official data from OSHA and the Bureau of Labor Statistics to break down the top three fatal causes. To be clear on the ranking, while some causes are disproportionately fatal, our countdown builds towards the number one cause of death by frequency, the one that happens most often. And beyond these causes, there's a single underlying reason that links them all, which we will reveal at the end. This is the failure that makes headlines. A crane tip-over or a structural collapse is a low-frequency, high-consequence event. According to OSHA data, these incidents account for approximately 11-21% to of crane-related fatalities, but their destructive power is absolute, often resulting in multiple fatalities and significant collateral damage. When a multi-million dollar machine, weighing hundreds of tons, succumbs to the forces of physics, there is nowhere to hide. No story illustrates this more powerfully than the infamous collapse of the Big Blue Crane. On July 14, 1999, at the construction site of the Miller Park Baseball Stadium in Milwaukee, workers were in the middle of a monumental task, the erection of the stadium's retractable roof. The tool for the job was one of the largest land-based cranes in the world, a Lampson LTL 1500 Transilift, nicknamed Big Blue for its colossal size and color. This machine had a staggering lift capacity of over 1,360 metric tons and stood over 560 feet tall. The plan for the day was to lift a 450-ton section of the roof into place. The lift began, but the weather was turning. Wind speeds were increasing, gusting to over 30 miles per hour, exceeding the manufacturer's specified limit of 20 miles per hour for sustained winds. The decision was made to press on. As the massive roof section was suspended in the air, the crane became a giant sail. The immense wind load, combined with the crane's configuration and the weight of the load, proved to be too much. With a sound described as a series of gunshots, followed by a thunderous roar, Big Blue collapsed. The entire structure twisted and fell, impacting the stadium structure and killing three ironworkers. The subsequent OSHA investigation placed the blame squarely on human error. The decision to proceed with the lift in winds that clearly exceeded the crane's operational limits. The tragedy of Big Blue hammered home a vital truth. The machine's limits are not a suggestion. In the years since, technology has provided new lines of defense. Modern cranes are now equipped with advanced computer systems known as Load Moment Indicators, or LMIs. These systems constantly monitor the boom angle, load weight, and wind speed. If the crane approaches an unsafe configuration, the LMI provides clear audible and visual alarms, and in some cases, can automatically lock out controls to prevent a catastrophic overload. These digital co-pilots provide a critical safety net, but ultimately, they are tools that support, not replace, the judgment of an experienced operator. It makes you wonder, is any deadline worth betting against a force of nature? The collapse of a machine of that scale is a devastating event. But some of the deadliest threats on a job site are the ones you can't even see. It doesn't roar like a collapsing boom or crash like a falling load. It is silent, instantaneous, and immediately lethal. Electrocution from contact with overhead power lines is one of the most lethal risks in crane operation. While not the most frequent cause of accidents, it is disproportionately fatal, responsible for approximately 25 to 40 percent of all crane-related fatalities, according to OSHA and CPWR data. A single touch can send thousands to tens of thousands of volts through the machine, killing the operator in their seat or anyone on the ground touching the crane or its load. The scenario is tragically common. A mobile crane arrives on a residential or commercial site to set trusses, lift HVAC units, or place precast panels. Overhead, often overlooked, are power lines carrying a lethal current. 
OSHA mandates a minimum clearance of 10 feet for lines rated up to 50 kilovolts, with greater distances required for higher voltages. But on a busy, congested job site, spatial awareness can falter. An operator focused on the load in the signal person might swing the boom just a few feet too far. Unlike a structural failure, there is often no warning. The moment the steel boom or load line makes contact, the entire crane becomes energized. Anyone in contact with it provides a path to ground for the electricity. This is why having a dedicated spotter, whose only job is to watch the boom's proximity to power lines, is a critical safety practice, often required by OSHA when working near power lines. To combat this invisible threat, modern technology offers several safeguards. Many cranes can be fitted with high-voltage proximity alarms, which sound a loud warning inside the cab if the boom gets too close to the power line's electrical field. Another key innovation is the insulating link, often a section made of non-conductive fiberglass, which can be installed between the hook and the load line. This device can prevent the current from traveling down to the riggers on the ground, though it offers no protection for the operator if the boom itself makes contact. These technologies provide an extra layer of warning, but they are never a substitute for the oldest and most reliable defense. A thorough pre-lift site inspection, clear communication, and an unwavering respect for the invisible danger that hangs overhead. While an invisible current is a terrifying prospect, the most common danger is the one that's in plain sight on every single lift. We now arrive at the single most frequent cause of fatal crane incidents. While a full collapse may draw more attention, this cause is far more common and, by the numbers, is responsible for the most lives lost. The danger is being crushed by the load itself. According to a Kona Cranes Training Institute analysis of OSHA data, failures involving the load account for roughly 37% of all incidents and nearly 40% of all fatalities. This is the danger that is present on every lift, every single day. It's a game of physics where the margins for error are razor thin. It happens when a sling snaps, when a shackle is improperly secured, or when a load shifts unexpectedly because its center of gravity was miscalculated. The ground crew, the riggers and signal persons are the ones working directly in the shadow of thousands of pounds of suspended steel, concrete, or equipment. They place their trust in the operator, the equipment, and the plan. When any one of those fails, the consequences are immediate and catastrophic. A stark example of this occurred not on a traditional construction site, but during the construction of a parking garage in Raleigh, North Carolina. In April 2019, a crew was using a crane to lift a massive, approximately 2,500-pound personnel platform into place. In the process, the load became unstable and fell. One rigger was killed instantly, and two others were severely injured. The OSHA investigation later highlighted issues with the rigging plan and equipment. It serves as a serious reminder that gravity is impartial. It doesn't care if you're building a skyscraper or a garage. Fortunately, new tools are helping to win this battle. Modern rigging equipment is increasingly fitted with RFID tags allowing crews to digitally verify inspection records and load capacities with a simple scan, eliminating guesswork. Wireless load cells provide a precise, real-time weight measurement that can be seen by the entire crew, ensuring the lift is within limits. Perhaps most importantly, the development of remote-controlled release shackles allows riggers to unhook a load from a safe distance, removing the need for them to work directly in the fall zone once the load is placed. These innovations are slowly removing human error from the most critical parts of the lift. As anyone who's been on the ground knows, this is where the daily battle for safety is won or lost. For the crews on the ground, the question is a daily one. Is the gear you're trusting with your life today as safe as it was yesterday? We've looked at collapses, electrocutions, and crushed loads. We've seen the devastating consequences and the technology designed to prevent them. But if you analyze the investigation reports from nearly every one of these tragedies, you will find one single unifying factor that overrides everything else. Human error. 
According to industry studies, human error contributes to over 80% of crane incidents. The LMI on Big Blue was a tool, but the decision to lift in high winds was human. Proximity alarms exist, but the failure to conduct a thorough site inspection is human. Low charts and RFID tags provide data, but the choice to use damaged rigging or rush a lift is human. This is not about placing blame. It is about acknowledging a fundamental truth of our industry. The greatest safety device on any job site is not a computer or a sensor. It is a well-trained, fatigue-free, and empowered crew. It's the operator who trusts their gut and refuses a lift that doesn't feel right. It's the rigger who has the confidence to halt the entire operation over a frayed sling. And it's the site supervisor who creates a culture where those decisions are not just accepted, but expected. The technology is a critical safety net, but it will never replace the diligence, communication, and judgment of the people in the cab and on the ground. From the catastrophic collapse of a mechanical giant, to the invisible arc of a live power line, to the crushing force of a dropped load, the dangers surrounding crane operations are immense. These machines are incredible tools, but they demand an absolute respect for the laws of physics and the procedures designed to manage their power. Understanding these three fatal causes isn't about fear, it's about knowledge and responsibility. Because on a job site, the difference between a routine lift and a tragedy is often just a few feet, a few pounds, or a few seconds of poor judgment. Thanks for watching Hard Hat Industries, your source for serious machines doing real work. If you like this, hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss what's next. Until then, keep your head down and your gear running.